What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Spencer. Taking a look at this new uh, heroic rank four Utopia deck. So I've been playing this. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that like the rank four engine is my favorite in the game, and I'm constantly looking for the best version of the rank four toolbox. And this is a very good candidate. So recently, it wasn't that long ago, all of this new heroic support came out. And I was kind of interested. It's like a really good, just like generic rank four extender deck. And I knew I couldn't completely get away from the automat engine. Like you can't just play pure heroics because most of their cards are buns, but there's a lot of just like insane synergy. So the heroic stuff is all about warrior monsters, level four warriors. And well, the, like one of the best cards in the game, not well, not the best cards in the game is dramatic, but one of the best rank four cards ever made. I don't think that's too crazy to say is Onomatopera, lets you search two, and these two give you so much advantage. So I just, I knew when I was gonna play this, I was like, this is the engine, and they're warrior monsters, it works super good with Heroic Challenger. It's absolutely crazy. This is, because the thing is, like I was playing like the normal Automat stuff with go, go, go cards, and the whole, you know, the whole lot. But the only problem is I lost so much to like Imperm, and it just kind of felt so lame. Like I just wanted the deck to be more extenders, and I think that this is like the way to do it. So these two cards alone produce you so much advantage. So this is just a free imperm bait, and it does work, trust me, because people, if you if your opponent reads it, it's like, oh, they get to special summon like three monsters from their hand, like I need to negate this. But now this has an inherent summon effect, or it has an effect in the hand. You control a Gaga -ga, ga monster, this counts as all of them. You can special summon it. So you're gonna trigger the effect of, you know, you topic on and they're gonna imperm it, and then you just bring out the body anyways. And as long as you have one more, you know, Zubaba -ba can bring this back from the graveyard. It's very cool interaction. So as long as you control two or more warrior monsters, which is just easy, right, off of Automata Para. So you have Automata Pickup that searches it, and you have three copies of it as well. And then I run Pot of Prosperity, because you want to see it as much as possible, obviously, because it's kind of like full combo by itself. But yeah, this is a free special summon, and it searches a heroic card, which is just a monster reborn. So I run a bunch of these cards these heroic cards and it's nice because if you already have like this card in your hand let's say heroic challenger can search another one that searches a heroic monster that is also just a free special summon so the more heroic cards you see in your hand actually the better because it's just more extenders but you know zubaba can bring this back pretty cool astral topia of course is just like has to be in this deck it's a free special summon as long as you control an xyz and then you can send one from hand or field to the graveyard and then add a number spell and trap. You can actually also <laughs> grab Onomatopera, which is really funny. I just wish this was an Onomat card. It'd be so, 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 so good. It's so close to being like the perfect card, but it does search numbers protection, which is a counter trap, right? It's your, your answer for Dark Ruler No More, which is very nice. And I do, like if you've been watching this, I'm, my end board's gonna be a little bit different than normal, so. You know, Dragon Arc can come down, and then I can attach, so Photon Lord, and then this is the new engine. I don't know, I haven't played this before. Uh, I do think this is also kind of a newer card that came out, but my goodness. So this lets you Foolish Burial Spriggans, and this is kind of a Garnet, kind of, sort of. It's not like a Garnet in the sense like, oh, if you see it, you can't do anything. It's just kind of inconvenient to have in your hand. You have to find a way to get it out. You can Normal Summon, it's a four, and there's a lot of free special summons in this deck you know, the four pool, uh, or you can pitch it off of like something like on and pair and that works too. So it's not the end of the world. Okay. And that helps you obviously just go into this free gigantic champion Sargas. This lets you just freely add a Therion, Therion monster. So the problem I always saw with the Utopia deck was like not putting up bodies, like really powerful ones. It's like, they were just kind of holes in it. You know, if you, let's say you negate the field spell of you know, like flu under ease or something, and then they just follow it up with, you know, triple tactics talent, and your board just like is super weak and bad. But if you do have this engine, you get an Omni Negate, and this really fills in the gaps. And also, Sargas also is a pop. It, it's if you detach material from an XYZ monster, you get to pop a card or return it to the hand. Very cool. And it's basically a quick effect because this obviously can summon as a quick effect during your opponent's turn. So if you want, I don't know, like maybe you, it depends on, you know, Anytime you detach, so if you negate a monster effect, obviously, you can also pop or return with Sargas, but sometimes you'd like to choose when you pop, you know? Like, if sometimes your opponent normal summons, you negate it with Photon Lord. You don't really have anything to pop or return to the hand, and that's kind of unfortunate, so sometimes it's good to hold this. I mean, you have an Omni and a monster negate, so I, didn't, I don't know. 
it's just kind of your preference, I guess. But it's kind of cool. You can really turn this basically into a click effect in the deck. And this is just a combo. So that's obviously just the bot there. I'll go quickly through this other one. So this is not with Astralpedia or whatever it's called. I forget what it's the Astral Monster that searches numbers protect. Uh, but you can like do super duper full combo. And this is obviously really cool. You can get rid of those extra hand traps or going second cards. The discard is sometimes a hard decision to make. It's, it's a little unfortunate. But yeah, so this was one of those examples where I did already have Heroic Call in my hand. So I just searches the other one, Heroic Envoy, which searches a Heroic Monster, and I play one more that's an extender. It's really an amazing engine. All right, it's just equal to three level four bodies, and there are free special summons too. It has nothing to do with your normal summon. I can just bring this out. Like a lot of times I'll just bring up multiple copies. This is just a free body to bring onto the board. Uh, and this just ends up being F-Zero, you know, kind of fuel. One of the cooler extenders in the deck, obviously, you know, um, Gigantis, searched by uh, Gallic Granite. Very cool interaction. It's like the perfect little engine to go into F-Zero. You have lots of Earth monsters. So the heroic monsters are Earth monsters, which is really cool. And so is Zubaba. So you'll almost, it'll basically always be live. Okay, and there goes Reculus. Like, this is just so cool, right? This is a pop, this is an Omni Negate, Hope Harbinger, F0, and then during my opponent's turn, obviously, I'm also going to Photon Lord. So every single zone on my board is filled with interruption, right? This is like Battle Protection, Spell, Monster Negate, another Monster Negate, everything, you know, Omni, and then to return to the hand, which can just be super duper powerful. Okay, so let's see how this works in action here. This is against Exo Sister. Kind of a weird hand. Like, I see Onomatopoeia. Doesn't really do anything too much. I don't have any of the other Onomat cards, but this is a warrior monster. It's kind of a free extender. Did Ash there, so that's okay. I'm still going to have at least a little bit of interruption, and I think my opponent also drops Droll, which I don't know. It's like, <laughs> why Ash in the first place if you have Droll in your hand? Are you so worried about Heroic Challenger? Like, Morningstar searching a Heroic card? Is Heroic just like tier zero? Does it have some sort of like crazy counter trap that I don't know about? But in any case, it worked out for me. So my opponent Ash drolls me, and I still put up some pretty decent interruption here. I have a spell negate and a monster negate. You basically can't get over these through battle. No lightning storm, too. He was playing it. <laughs> Overlay network. Yeah, that's just nothing. So this is that new like spirit card. I guess it's like a rank four, but I don't, I don't know. Like I read it, and everyone talks about how good it is, but it doesn't feel good. <laughs> Maybe like in a spirit rank four deck. I don't know if that is a thing, but I thought that was kind of cool to be able to kind of fight through that. This is, again, kind of a weird opening, but uh, like Gaga Ga Code is here, but I don't have anything in my hand to kind of extend. This is on normal or special summon too. This card is like very, very strong. This is just a free special summon, so Astral will be online pretty soon here. I will have a, you know, XYZ on the board. And I'm going to be able to get the counter trap too. So a hand that kind of looked like super pedestrian and really kind of was, is kind of like shaping up. I'm going to at least be able to get Photon Lord and Hope Harbinger and have a counter trap. It's not like the perfect end board, but it does kind of get the job done depending on, you know, what my opponent's playing. And I think it's Flew Under Weasel. I think they have like a pretty decent hand. Like they don't brick. Okay, so there goes Photon Lord. Let's see what happens. My opponent's going to start with map. You always negate the effect of, like, the second effect. So he has, uh, you know, Advent and Adventure, which searches him, you know, the map. I, I, again, this is not like a bad flu board or opening hand. He's going to go for Rabina, you know, chain that second. That's fine. The only one that really matters to negate is Eglin. Who's going to go ahead and do that? I'm just going to go ahead and negate. So, boom. Dealt with map dealt with the normal summon and that's really all you have to do for flu and i still had the counter trap so in case he had like super crazy follow-up like i don't know like pot of uh not, it's like the uh i can't think of the dumb name uh the one that looks at the top three I cannot believe i can't remember that pot of card but yeah i still had the answer for that <laughs> okay this is against gold pride this is a great opening so i think i am going to risk it and like discard the called by the grave that's why I started with Heroic Envoy, hoping that if he did have Ash, he would have used it there. Because if your opponent Ash is your Onomatopoeia, you're like really in a rough spot. 
but this is like the perfect opening he does have gamma so that was kind of surprising but that's okay like i still have gigantis there so i'm going to be able to again just go through those normal plays there <laughs> I'm going to be able to bring this back, which is kind of cool. So I am going to be able to go into F0, I think, or maybe I'm kind of stuck there. Oh, that's right. I already had Gigantis, and that's kind of unfortunate. There's really no other rock extender in the deck that you can play. Not realistically, anyways. That would really do anything for you. So, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, the counter, I have two. He did have Imperm in his hand. Mm, okay. I'm going to go ahead and add this to my hand because I think I knew he's playing gold pride and I know they have those traps that they said he only has two like cards left in his hand right I didn't want him to, like I was scared that his other card in hand was uh, the punk card that kind of like searches everything or like brings him out from the deck or fusion summons so I wanted him to have to commit his normal summon to something you know that way I could use my counter trap on it I don't think this other card in his hand actually did anything, so it didn't matter. But that's that's why I decided to negate with Photon Lord. And there he goes. He tried to go for Chariot Carry, and sorry, that is not going to do. And I'm just going to go for Galaxy Cyclone, which I searched last turn. Kind of neat, right? It's kind of neat. Okay, this is against Madone. One of my favorite cards that I've included in this deck because there's so much spell searching is Psyframe. It's good going second, but your opponent can get baited so bad, especially because so many people are playing um, Droll and Lockburn, and this is like the perfect card. So you would, this is kind of weird, right? Like maybe you would think like you would never play Synchros, right? Well, you can, because think about it. This card traded with two cards. It trades with whatever hand trap your opponent had, and then it trades with one more. The only card that stops you from really doing anything in this turn at all is Dragonar. You can't use Dragonar's effect, but you can at least use it during your opponent's turn, right? And again, this traded with two cards, and you can see that it literally is trading with two cards here, but normally your opponent's hand trap doesn't go through, and you rip one. So you only have to deal with like so many cards in front of your hand. And normally you can go kind of for like the Spriggan's plays, and then you get at least one monster that comes out from Dragonar. And that's like most of the time like good enough to win you the game. And look at this, all these extenders. So just like that one Psyframe essentially Kind of like won me the game. I'm going to go for Onomatopoeia so I can bring this out. Again, this is just kind of Imperm or Effect Bailer Bait. It works a lot of the times. I also had Morningstar, and that's why I like this deck so much. Because it just feels like it has so much more potential. Like I don't think if I was playing the regular Onomatopoeia deck that I played before that I'd be able to play through Ash Imperm. Like I would hope to get, you know, like Crossout Designator, but... Cyframe is so much better. Now, if your opponent has Nibiru, you just lose, and I think you just accept that. Like, it is what it is. I'm not going to build my deck just because someone could possibly be playing Nibiru and maybe possibly open it in their hand. I just scoop when my opponent has Nibiru. It is what it is. But that's that's pretty neat. So, like, I already had F0 too through all of that. Hash Imperm. You know, I was able to make F0, and then again, like, I hope Harbinger is going to come out that next turn. And then actually during main phase two, if I could just search one more extender, right? I have Hero Call in my hand. If I could just find one more, like maybe the Astral card, and it special summons itself out, I get Numbers Protect, first of all. Uh, and then I can also go for Therion, and that's just, like, super nuts to be able to do that through kind of all that interruption that my opponent had. Uh, let's go ahead and show this one, because I think it was pretty hilarious it's not really the greatest duel but something interesting happens that i felt like is worth recording but you know reinforcement of the army so again that's why i play like cyframe like just trying to bait my opponent out he goes for dimensional barrier droll like that's kind of unfortunate so like i think my only option here and this kind of like i wish like dryden was legal or something because i think that would have been like even a little bit better right you can just like go into a rank four and then use dryden that way, if your opponent, I don't know, Dimensional Barrier drolls you, at least you have a shot. But I am, like, forcing him. Like, okay, there's only a few possibilities. If it was cashed here, I scoop and I just lose. Could be Flew Under Ease. In that case, that's also kind of unfortunate. But they do, I feel like, have to get over it using the Battle Phase. Unless they open up the Continuous Spell. So this is a quick effect during your main phase or your opponent's battle. And the other card is Sprite, you know, and it was Sprite. And I'm thinking, well, this is kind of nice because I feel like he's kind of forced at this point to get Smashers, and that just kind of feels bad to, like, trade with this. But this is a real threat. Like, he's going to have to get over this. He's going to have to invest, you know, some serious something into it. And he goes for Soul Sweeper, which is, like, not good because it doesn't do anything during my turn. 
We'll see what he does main phase two. Kind of surprised he didn't keep red. I think he goes into, yeah, Melfi of the Forest and he searches Caddy. All right, I think that like gets him Herald. So he's gonna freely special summon. So if I play, he gets to search out Penny and then go from there. I was really hoping he had Ash. Like that would have been really good for Cyframe, but uh, he didn't. But it just ends up being discard fodder. Oh, he did have Ash. That's right. <laughs> I remember, um, I think that when I activated on amount of pickup, there was an activation window for him. Because normally, like, I feel like I would have discarded Gamma and just, like, gone for the big play. But this is actually just, like, super big brain. Okay, so he's going to go for, he's going to negate this, which is fine. doesn't really do anything. And then I'm going to go for Cyframe. I'm going to get rid of Dimension Shifter, which is, I guess, kind of just sucky. doesn't do anything. But Normal Summon, right? I don't want to be able to use Herald. I can make that into a level four. And then here we go. I'm off to the races. Gigantis can come out. And then I can get two Negates. Now, I could have. I could have gone into two Negates. But this is... Okay. Well, here's the position I'm in. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever... Like, this card actually has an effect. And I've used it only one time since I've ever played, like, the game. And I've been using this engine. I used this one time in Raid Raptor so long ago. If your opponent's life points is at least 3,000 higher than yours, you can attach three XYZ materials from this card and pay life points so you only have 10 left. Destroy as many special summon monsters on your opponent's field as possible. And if you do banish them, then inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each. So I could go into two negates with Dragonar. And that is an option. But Soul Sweeper immediately contends with one. And if he has, like, blue, I think I lose. If I do this, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to banish all of them. I only have 10 life points left. Okay, then I think that the only thing that beats me off the top is starter. Because if blue doesn't do it, jet doesn't do it, nimble beaver definitely would do it. So that would be unfortunate. But, like, any level two, like, there's not a lot of them. So I'm thinking I'm just going to be playing a game of, you know, hope. <laughs> and I did rank up. I can't use the effect. I don't have two materials, but it does still have that battle phase effect. So I only have 10 life points left. So is he able, if he's able to put up like a bigger body, I like I have to find a way to protect it or I would like kind of lose automatically to anything. And he doesn't top deck anything. I thought that was just like super hilarious. This is against Trap Trick. Maybe I get to use Gamma here. People get really greedy with these things. So he does go for the normal summon here, which is great. This is such a good normal summon, like, destroyer, especially for trap tricks. So all he has is some back row. Now I'm going to have to play into it on some level, because otherwise there's just nothing I can do. I'm just, I'm just going to have to get hit with whatever it is. Okay, I can search two. And I, I already have. Like, this is... A really good hand. So I feel like if he, whatever he has, it can't be that great to where it like completely stops me. Because I'm going to go into something like pretty light here, I feel like. Okay, I'm going to go into Tornado. Basically just to force this out. He's like, he doesn't have a choice at this point. So then I can just like, you know, bring back the Automatopoeia. I already searched the Monster Reborn. And this is great. Like I'm going to get the Omni Negate and I'm going to get the two, you know, bodies. So basically, I'm going to have an interruption for every single card. So Argos is a pop. You know, Therius is the Omni to gate, and then I get the two summons out, you know, with my monster, uh, Dragonar, which is fantastic. Like, it's just really cool to be able to do that, and, like, Cyframe Gear Gamma is, like, the, seriously the MVP of this deck, for sure. This is against some sort of trap deck, kind of interesting. A pretty good opening, like, a lot of free special summons, so that could come in handy here. I'm going to go through these plays first. Again, there's just no way to play around a beer. You can't get to negate. Like I've hoped in the future there's a like a rank four that just like lets you negate the effect of monster effects that activate in hand. And like that's the only effect it does. Like that could make a huge difference, but unfortunately that doesn't exist. I'm gonna go for the Omni here. Just a solid setup. You know, I get to pop a card too. So if you are playing, you know, like a Labyrinth deck and they try to set a bunch of cards, you know, you can hold on to your number 99 if you know you're playing Labyrinth. That way you can pop a card and then you still have like a at least a uh, negate for it. I accidentally clicked the effect of my Sargus popping itself and then he's going to go set four back row. Okay, so he's going to go for Reincarnation, Soul Levy, none of those things really do anything. 
And the, like my new hand's actually better than it was before. So I'm going to get a Monster Reborn here. Bring back a four. And then I can go into Tornado Dragon, start picking out the back row. And then suddenly I now have the answer to every single card. Yeah, Inferno Temp has like banished my entire deck, I'm pretty sure. But it doesn't actually matter because I still have Lethal on board. <laughs> so he does like successfully banish everything, but too bad. Like I don't even need a next turn. This one, these last two, I think are just my opponent's scoop, but I had like such a good opening hand. I wanted to kind of showcase them real quick. And it's like I already had on on a pair. These are usually the cards that I search and that's why I played this extended engine. So like if you already open up Morningstar, like it's like your hand, the potential of what your hand goes up so exponentially because you're already searching other extenders because you already have them in your hand. It's very, very good. So this becomes a four. I'm going to Gallic Granite. And I can summon this out. And then I can go into Topic Sage. So I'm going to go into F0. Still have lots of extenders here. So many. I have not used Zuba Ba Coat yet. Or Gaga Ga Coat. <laughs> they get confusing, the names. I can search the Omni Gate. So F0 plus Sargus plus my two monsters. So everything, every single part of my board is going to be filled with Interruption. So kind of a high ceiling. I mean, this is definitely a pretty good end board. As long as my opponent doesn't have Dark Ruler no more, that would obviously be a huge bummer. Everything else is pretty much covered, though. And then once again, you know, I can go ahead and activate the effect. And my opponent just scoops after seeing everything. So yeah, that's Heroic Champion Utopia. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Other than that, that's going to do it for today's video. And I will see you guys next time.